Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. We have another chance, another opportunity to spend time with you and spend time in God's Word. Tonight, as we're spending time in God's Word, we are thinking about all that God has done for us and His grace and His mercy and His love and peace and strength, how that has wrenched down in our moments and our times and in our lives when nothing else was able to lift us up out of our situations, when nothing else was able to give us peace and strength and encouragement, when nothing else was able to speak in, into our moments and our situations and bring the peace and deliverance and strength that you and I know tonight. The opportunity <clears throat> to just read God's Word is so amazing. You know, we are so blessed here in America, Sister Crystal, because there's many. I, I get messages from individuals overseas asking me if I can help them purchase Bibles for their people because many of those organizations are sharing one Bible amongst one another. You know, you and I are super blessed. I guarantee you that if you went downstairs, Sister Cindy, into my basement where all of my books are, you would probably find many, many Bibles. Uh, I love collecting Bibles. Many I have different uh, styles and ones, and I just love the Word of God. But I don't think about sometimes, Brother Al, how blessed I am that I'm able to access God's Word at any time. I don't recognize, Brother Stewart, how blessed I am that I still have the vision to read and the ability to comprehend and understand what I'm reading. I don't always understand, Sister Brenda, or, or comprehend how blessed I am that God has allowed me to be able to preach and teach His Holy Word, to be able to understand it and comprehend it and let it come alive in my life. You know, I was preaching Sunday there's a scripture that talks about how that the preaching of the cross to some is foolishness. I am so thankful tonight, my friend, that I recognize the truth of God's word, that I recognize the power of God's word, what God's word does for me. You know, in, in my lifetime, I have been blessed to hear many great speakers speak on many different things. And Sister Crystal, I've been excited when I've heard many different people speak about many different topics and, and had the honor of hearing them talking in depth about great and knowledgeable things. And many of those inspired me and encouraged me. But I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. Nothing impacts me more than what the preached Word of God does. Nothing impacts me more than the Word of God itself. The Word of God talks about how that we search out the Scriptures. For them, we think that we have life. I'm so glad that as I read through God's Word and I study God's Word and I hear God's Word being preached and teach, that I find inside of it things that speak to my moment, things that speak to my life, things that speak to my situation. And Brother Rocky, <clears throat> there's no one who can comfort me the way that God's Holy Word does. Sister Brenda, when the enemy or the things of this world try to entrap me or ensnare me or discourage me. It is the power of God's word that has set me free. Brother Frank, when I was lost in sin and darkness, it was the power of God's word that wretched into my moment, that wretched into my life and set me free. As the word of God said, it's the truth that sets us free. I cannot. Maybe one of you can explain to me tonight. But I cannot understand why that in this world today, for many Christians, and, and, and it blows my mind, I know that the younger Christians may not have this as much, but the older Christians that grew up on the Word of God, that understand the foundational truths of God's Word, it just blows my mind, Brother Workman, 
how that they can turn and turn towards other things and instead of the truth of the Word of God, knowing where they were before God's Word got a hold of their life, knowing the situation they were in, knowing how lost they were, how much they struggled, how much pain they was going through, until God's true Holy Word rushed into their lives and set them free. I cannot understand. And maybe one of you can help me, Sister Brenda. Help me understand why those Christians... Do not hunger and thirst for the word of God. Why those Christians are selling for anything else other than God's holy word being preached and teached in the pulpit? Why, Brother Jeff, are they selling for the commentaries of the world or for the doctrines of man? Why are they selling for stories and fables? Why are they not hunger and demanding that the word of God be preached? Because, my friend, I'm going to tell you, I can go downstairs right now and turn on the news channel and hear many, many different things spoken. I can go on YouTube, and, and, and Brother Workman, I can find many great speakers. But none of them changes my life like those that speak the true word of God. God's word. Brother Ronnie, when it was spoken in the beginning, created all that we know. God's spoken word. Not man's spoken word, not man's stories, not man's ideologies, not anything that man done. God's spoken word created all that we know. God's spoken word, according to the book of Ezekiel, is what brought life back to those dry bones. God's spoken word, my friend, and I want you to think about this tonight for yourself. And you'll understand that what I'm telling you is the truth. How many times along your journey, before you got saved and after you got saved, how many times along your journey has God's word reached down in your moment and strengthened you and encouraged you and enabled you and helped you? How many times, Sister Tammy, has God's spoken word been what you needed in your moment, in your hour. Because I'm going to tell you something. As a pastor, I've been pastoring for about 30 years, and, and I have to walk into many different rooms, Brother Frank, and I'm going to tell you that there's not a word that Pastor Perry can say to someone that just lost their child to death. There's not a word that I can say to them in my human comprehension in my mind that will take their pain away. But I'm so glad that God's spoken word can speak into every moment, in every situation, in every circumstance, and bring a peace Bring a calm, bring an assurance, bring a strength. Man, let me tell you something about my friend. I know that many times along my journey that I've had people who's tried to comfort me and encourage me in many different ways. And Brother Workman, I know they loved me. And they were honestly trying to help me. But I'm going to tell you something, my friend. It wasn't until I dug down in God's Word and found the answer for my situation and my circumstance that I really began to find strength and encouragement. It wasn't until I dug down into God's Holy Word that I was able to stand. For those who'd known me years ago, I struggled with a lot of different things. And yes, in my beginning stages, as a Christian and as a preacher, there was things that baffled me and overwhelmed me. And I know that many times, Brother Rocky, many people, friends and family and different ones, tried to help me and guide me and lead me. But I'm going to tell you something, my friend. Brother Al, I did not find the strength and the understanding and the encouragement that I need until I sat down and began to study into God's holy word. Not only did I understand 
the truth of God's word. Not only did it set me free from the misperceptions, but when I begin to understand, Brother Frank, how that God's holy word actually applied to me, is when I begin to grow and find that confidence and that peace and that strength. Man, if you would have heard me in my beginning stages of preaching the gospel, whenever I would get around those older preachers, man, I struggled because, man, I, I didn't have as much confidence in but boy, has God changed that. You know, there's one scripture that I think about how that when the Holy Spirit came in, that Brother Frank, they, the people there, when the Holy Spirit fell on them, they began to speak with boldness. My friend, that's because it was the Holy Spirit bringing that word alive inside of them that gave them that confidence, that gave them that assurance that regardless of what the world may say and regardless of what the world may do, that God's holy word was true and they could stand on it and believe in it and trust in it. Sister Angela, when I begin to get that in my personal life and I begin to grow in my understanding of God's word, I begin to find that confidence and that assurance. And that's the reason why that, that Pastor Perry is able to preach and teach and, and do devotions the way that he does because something changed in my life as God's word got a hold of me and began to grow in me and begin to come alive in me. <clears throat> do you know what tonight, my friend? The power of God's word can do that for you too. The power of God's word can give you confidence and peace. The power of God's word can give you the ability to stand in the midst of your storms and your trials. The power of God's word can give you the ability not only to bear when the enemy attacks you as the shield of faith quenches the fiery darts, but also the word of God gives you the ability to defend and fight back against the enemy and overcome him not only for yourself, but for others as well. The power of God's word should not be denied. The power of God's word should not be neglected. The power of God's word should not be forgotten. But do you know what scares me right now as a Christian, my friend? As I watch progressive Christianity coming alive more and more, do you know what scares me? Brother Philip, is that they're doing everything they can to do away with God's word and replace it with something else. Every day I'm seeing more and more where people are moving away from the preached and teached word of God to something else and taking its place just so they feel good. I want you to know something, my friend. I love getting out there and worshiping and praising God just like anyone else. But I'm going to tell you something. It's not the praise and worship that sets me free and gives me the strength that I need. It is God's word. And Sister Tina, if we cast aside God's word, then my friend, I'm going to tell you something. The enemy's going to win. You know, Scripture talks about, and I've shared this several times over my journey, but, but I can't help it fits in right now. It blows my mind. And somebody please help me understand this tonight. Brother Rocky, if you've got the answer, help me understand this. Why is it that the Word of God says there'll come a time when they'll not endure sound doctrine, but heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and being turned unto fables? They're being turned, Brother Frank, unto stories. That while they may be inspirational, they do not have the power to set people free. 
While they may be inspirational and make you get excited, they do not have the power to anchor you in the midst of a storm. They do not have the power to deliver you and help you fight the battle against the enemy. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the writer begins to say this, and I want you to think about what he says here. He says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you what? The gospel which I preach to you. Brother Roddy, when the apostle went down and began to speak about the gospel, I'm sure that he had many stories that he could have told. I'm sure he saw many things along his journey. But he knew what it would take to set them free. And it was the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, I preach to you the gospel. Which also you received in which you stand. Brother Rocky, I know that people love the darkness as you're saying. But my friend, I'm going to tell you something. Hiding in the darkness and hiding from the truth is not going to get people where they need to be. It's not going to cause them to receive what they think it's going to cause them to receive. You cannot stand on a lie. You cannot stand on stories and fairy tales and fables. You cannot stand on family traditions and cultures and customs. My friend, the only thing that you can stand upon is the Word of God. It is the only truth in this world that will stand when everything else fails. That's why I said not one jot, not one tittle would pass away. My friend, I'm going to tell you something. Whether you believe it or not, I want you to hear me tonight, my friend. Whether we believe it or not, Brother Philip, whether we accept it or not, God's Word is going to come to pass. God's Word cannot be stopped, nor can it be changed. But it's going to happen. It's going to come to pass, Sister Angela. And until we've learned how to receive it and allow it to come alive in our lives, we're going to miss all that God has for you and I. Brother Sammy, I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> I've got a lot of good friends that I love. But man, does it break my heart as I see them straying away from God's word and replacing it with other things. It doesn't change my love for them, Sister Crystal. I love them. But it causes my heart to break for them. And I'm not talking about, again, I'm not talking about people who never was sought upon the solid rock to begin with. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about friends of mine. Brother Workman knows them. We're not going to call them by name, but friends of ours who we know grew up and was standing on the word. It wasn't that many years ago that I've heard them preach and stand and speak about the true word of God. But for whatever reason... They begin to drift and replace it with something else. Brother Frank, maybe they think it makes him popular. Maybe they think that it draws a crowd. Maybe they think that, that they're, and it's better. I got news for you. There is nothing better than the truth of God's word tonight, my friend. <clears throat> if you're tired of the enemy beating you up, knocking you down. 
if you're tired of watching your family being drugged into the darkness and losing them to the sinful world, my friend, I'm going to tell you something. We need to take a stand on God's holy word and do not be moved. Let us get back, Brother Philip, to singing that song. I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. Honey, I got news for you. The only way that's going to happen is when the word of God is planted deep in our heart. How do we know that? Well, my friend, if you want to understand that a little bit more, then go over to the parable of the seed sower. Because every one of those individuals who did not allow the word of God, which was the seed that was being planted, my friend, the word of God, everyone who did not allow the word of God to take deep roots in their life, there were several different things as it came along that destroyed the word of truth in their lives. But my friend... When you read, there's also those ones who let the word of God dig deep roots into their lives. And it is those who stand the test of time. See, there's one group. We, we talk about those that spring up quickly, and we know those people. We've seen those people, Sister Crystal, that, that it appears like, man, that they spring up quickly. They get real excited for God for a season. And they, as soon as the heat of the day, and that's what we talk about when he talked about the sun and the heat came out, when the heat of the day comes or the harsh of the battle comes, they're gone. Do you know what standing on true word and letting the word dig deep into your life will help you do? It will give you the power to stand the test of the storms and the trials. It will give you the power and the ability to go through all of this world and journey through it as the enemy attacks you on every hand, but yet you will still be able to stand. Why? Because it's the power of God's word. That's going to bring forth the plan of God and keep you going. You're right, Sister Tammy. There's many in that same passage of Scripture that, that the riches and the cares of life begin to choke out that seed of faith. And because they got their eyes off of God and got it on the world and started caring more about the world than they did about God and about His Word and about His truth and allow it to push them through. He says this. He said, which you stand, by which you also are saved. Hmm. It is God's truth that sets us free, that saves us. Why would I want to, why would I want to, Brother Workman, replace that with anything else? If that holy word saved me and set me free, me knowing where I was and where it's brought me to and what it's done for me, why would I start now wanting to replace this word with anything else if I really want my family, my friends, my neighbors, my co-workers, this nation, this world to be saved and set free? Why would I change it for anything else? It saved me. And my friend, it is the word of God that saved you. You weren't saved by the ideologies of man. Scientists did not create something that saved you and set you free. But you were saved by that word. As a matter of fact, how do we know that? Because Jesus himself was the word made flesh. Now listen what he says. He says, if you'll hold fast to that word which I preached to you, unless you believed it in vain, huh? He said that word that you came down and gave your life to the Lord for, that word 
that you've been believing in and following. He said, unless you believed it in vain. He said, hold fast to it. <clears throat> he said, for I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to what? The scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to scriptures. And that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. And after that he was seen by over five hundred brethren at once of whom the greater part remained to the present. But some have fallen asleep. My friend, there is no greater word or greater truth that we can receive by allowing ourselves or beginning to understand the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what it actually does for us. Understanding that he came and he died for us when we did not deserve it. When he came and he died for us and made a way for us, not because he had to, not because it was taken from him. He himself, Jesus said, no man taketh my life from me, but I lay it down freely. And if I lay it down, I can take it up again. I want you to know something. The Jews didn't take it. The Romans didn't take it. Jesus gave his life for you and I when we were still lost in our sins, in our darkness, and with out any reason other than the fact that God loves us. To the world, if you take that scripture and throw it away, to the world, the world will try to teach you that God loves you by your much giving. That the world will try to teach you that God loves you by your works. Aren't you glad that you and I know that according to the book of Ephesians that we have been given this gift of God and it's not by works least any man should boast. Your salvation is not based on works. Your salvation is not based on what you give. But your salvation is based upon accepting the blood of Jesus Christ. The gift that God gave you and I. Without the word. The world will try to convince you that it's come many other ways. He said and after that. He was seen by James and by all the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me also as by one born out of due time. We know that the apostle Paul on the road to Damascus had an experience with Jesus. My friend, on the road to Damascus, he met this one. That he was attacking. If you remember, the Apostle Paul was on his way down the road to Damascus to go in prison some people who called themselves Christians that they might be delivered to the high priest and be put to death. But this man, when he met the truth, his life was changed. Brother Stewart, forever. My friend, I'm going to tell you something. You and I both know people who are out there living in sin, and sin has gotten a hold of them, lying, deception has gotten a hold of them, and they are doing things that are ungodly, unholy, and not pure and true. And they're doing stuff that absolutely blows my mind. And my friend, if we do away with God's word, those individuals will never have an opportunity to be saved. But brother Sammy, even those who are in the darkest of darkest of sin, through the power of God's word, can be saved and set free and delivered because we know the word is Jesus and that when he shines, because he is the light of truth, when he shines into that darkness, the darkness cannot comprehend it. My brother Philip, I'm going to tell you something. 
people's stories and their traditions and their fables and their made up things will never deliver anyone out of darkness. Honey, I got news for you. If you don't think there's good speakers in this world that don't have the power of truth, listen to any politician. Honey, they'll speak all kinds of garbage and convince you that they're going to move mountains and change the world, but we know that it doesn't change a thing. My friend, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm not trying to pick on anybody. I'm not trying to proselyte anybody. I don't do that stuff. But I'm going to tell you this. If you are not participating in a church that preaches the word of God on a regular basis, my friend, I think I'd be looking for a new place to go. Because I'm going to tell you something. Whenever the enemy attacks me, it's going to be the word of God that defends me. It's going to be the power of God that shows me the truth and helps me to understand and not allow me to be deceived. The Apostle Paul, he was set free on that day by the truth of the word. He says, for I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Sister Sandra, I don't know what any of you guys need tonight, but I'm going to tell you something. You will not find it in any other book except for God's holy word. What you need in this day and hour. Do I think people make good statements? Absolutely, Brother Philip. I've heard quotes and, and statements that preachers have made over my lifetime that I've loved and I've used some of those quotes. But my friend, I'm going to tell you something. I also make sure that everything that I talk about aligns with God's word and I support it with God's holy word so that we know where this stands and how it's fulfilled in God's plan. He says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. He said, I preach to you Back at verse 1, the gospel. I preach to you the truth. I preach to you the word of God. My friend, I'm going to tell you something. If our church grows, not, not just Pastor Perry's, but Gordon Road Church of God, if our church grows or your church grows or people get saved and people get delivered and we get what we need, the only way that's going to happen is when God's word exists in the midst of those people. He said, now if Christ is preached, listen to what he says, that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Boy, ain't that a powerful truth. And, and, and why that's so significant is there some that believe that there is no resurrection of the dead. But I want you to know, as a matter of fact, according to Thessalonians, it said, when the Lord descends, the dead in Christ shall rise first. This mortal will put on immortality. Uh, this corruptible will put on incorruption. We'll shed this earthly body, put on that spiritual body, and we'll go up to meet him in the air. 
I don't know what people think, but there is a bodily resurrection coming. Brother Workman, when I preach a funeral and I get down there to the graveyard, I don't preach that this is their final destination. I don't preach that this is it. What I preach is, is this is a temporary holding place until that day when this body is quickened and it comes alive again and it's changed. Because, honey, that day is coming. Oh, how I long. Some days, Sister Don needed to shed this old fleshly body because it brings me so much pain and misery and agony. How I long someday, that song they sing, I'm kind of homesick. It's not just to be at heaven, but it's also to get rid of this mortal body and change it for that spiritual body. One that'll no longer be sick. One that'll no longer be struggling. One that will no longer have to fight against sin. One that will no longer be held down by the temporal things of this world. The Word of God says we don't know what we'll be like, but we know we'll be like and unto Him. You know, I'm not worried about <laughs> Brother Philip, whether if I'm going to be 16 or 30 or 130. I'm not worried about that. Why? Because I want you to know something. That spiritual body will not be plagued and be held by all the troubles and the sorrows that this world, of this fleshly body that it holds. Aren't you glad there'll be no lame and no deaf and no blind there? Aren't you glad that, oh, being an author, you know, we're talking about arthritis and bursitis and all that good stuff. Aren't you glad that's not going to be there? Because some days this old body, boy, it lets me down in so many ways. He says, and if Christ, now I want you to think about, if there's no resurrection, he said, he said if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. And your faith is also empty. Brother Sammy, I'm going to tell you something. It's not just the preaching of the cross. It's not just the burial in the tomb. But honey, it's the resurrection that brings the power to the entire story. Why do you think that when the soldiers went back and began to tell about how that Jesus was raised from the grave, how, why do you think that they wanted to change the story and try to kill him? The devil wanted to stop the truth of Jesus' resurrection many, many years ago. I think I'm going to, I might make somebody mad, but I hope you hold on to your seats. Do you know what saddens me? is that we take one of the most powerful days of Christianity and replace it with paganism and worldly things. I want you to know something. Resurrection Sunday has nothing to do with the Easter Bunny or Easter. Resurrection Sunday has to do with the power of the risen Savior that now sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. It talks about a risen Savior that applied the blood to the mercy seat that you and I might be set free. Why would we want to replace it with the elements of the world and give praise to something else? Oh, preacher, woo! That's tough, but it's true. See, what happens is when we get away from God's word and God's truth, we get wrapped up into so many other things. He says, whoo! Yes, we are found false witnesses of God, if that's true. Because we have testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. He said, for if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. 
And if Christ has not risen, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men the most pitiful. My friend, I'm going to tell you something. If I did not believe that Jesus Christ was who he said he was. If I did not believe, Brother Frank, that he rose from the dead and that you and I have a hope beyond this world, I promise you I would be doing something different with my life right now. I would. But do you know why I'm not, Brother Ronnie? Because I have experienced what the power of God's word can do inside of a man who is filled with sin and suffering and pain. I'm going to tell you, not only has God delivered me from sin, but God has delivered me from the struggles of PTSD and depression and anxiety and fear. So many things that the power of God's word has done for me. One of the greatest things that it's done is that it's also delivered me from immaturity. Yes, I'm still growing in God's word. But my friend, I'm going to tell you something. I'm growing in a way that gives me the confidence and the understanding of the power of God. Y'all give me a minute. I'm going to preach to y'all here in a second. He said, and now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. Now, we know that because of the sins that took place in the Garden of Eden, because of Adam and Eve, that death was pronounced upon man, not only a physical death, but a spiritual death as well. But through the power of Jesus Christ's resurrection, life has come inside the spirit man, and life is coming to this mortal man as we change in him. He said, for since by man came death, said, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. My friend, let me tell you something. When we understand the sinful state of man, when we are born into this world, we are born into the sin state, my friend. When you are born into this world, you are born into the sin state, and therefore you must be born Again, when we understand that, Donita, we understand that every one of us, I don't care who you are, I don't care how good you've lived, I don't care what you've done, honey, there has to be a day in your life when you come down, whether it's out an order in the church, in your car, beside the road, but you have to come down to a place where you have that broken heart and contrite spirit and get redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and become born again. Honey, living good doesn't save you. I know a lot of good people and some people's got this attitude, Brother Wormann, why do I need to be saved? I've been a good person all my life. I've not cheated nobody. I've not lied to nobody. I've not stolen. I've not done all of these things. We need to be born again because death was pronounced upon man and we're born into that state of death is spiritually and physically and the only way we get delivered is through the power of Jesus Christ. He says, but each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits, and afterward, those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, he says, 
when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father and when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power for he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Aren't you glad that through Jesus Christ Death has no hold on us. That's why we can say, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Why? Because through Jesus Christ, we have been promised eternal life. He said, For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he put all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him that God may be all in all. Otherwise, what would they do who are baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all? Why then are they baptized for the dead? And why do we stand in the jeopardy every hour? I affirm by the boasting in which in you which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. If huh? If any manner of men I have fought with be beast at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me? If the dead do not rise, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. He said if there is no resurrection and there is no life to accept, after this, he said, let us cast aside everything and just go out and enjoy life. Because, honey, after it's, it's gone. But I'm so glad, Brother Rocky, that this is not it. That this is not my only hope. That this is not my only promise. That there is an eternity to live. And I pray tonight that you will be right. That you will be born again. And you will be ready when your day comes to leave this world. That you might live all eternity in heaven my friend because if you don't accept this truth and I'm not talking about cherry picking the word of God but I'm talking about if you don't accept the full truth of the entire word of God then my friend there is also an eternity to live in hell fire he says do not be deceived. Listen to what he says. He says, evil company does what? Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Now, my friend, I've heard so many people who talk about the preacher. There is nothing about the laws of God that apply to us today. My friend, I'm going to tell you something. If there is nothing about God's laws that apply to us today, then how do we know that we are sinning and coming short of God? Because it is the laws of God that point to us and show us the areas we come up short. And if that's true, if Jesus did away with all of that, and Brother Workman, there is nothing that points to sin, then sin no longer exists. Then why does the apostle here in Corinthians speak to them and say, sin no more? Well, how would they be sin? Ain't it amazing? How that people will take the pieces of the word of God that they want and the pieces they don't agree with, they try to say that it no longer applies to us. That we no longer have any part of it. I want you to know something, honey. The Old Testament is a schoolmaster unto the New. You will not fully understand the New Testament unless you comprehend the Old Testament and know how all of that applies to the plan of God for you. I believe that's the reason why that many struggle in their walk with God, my friend. Why? Because the Apostle Paul says, for many of them do not have the knowledge of God. 
Do you know he talks about a people that perish for a lack of knowledge or a lack of wisdom? My friend, I'm going to tell you something. Unless we fully dig down and understand the true word of God, you and I will be in trouble. It's time, Brother Johnny, that we begin to live by the whole word of God, by the truth of God's word. And I promise you tonight, my friends, with you, don't be afraid of the whole word. Don't be afraid of the truth word. Do you know what tonight? There's a lot of people that's afraid of some of it. I want you to know something, my friend. If you will dig down and learn the entire word of God, you will be able to stand against the enemy that's trying to destroy you. You'll find that you'll have more days of victory than you will of defeat and discouragement. Tonight, let us pray. Let us pray that people will get hungry for the Word of God. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to you tonight, we are truly grateful and thankful, Father God, for all your many blessings, all your many truths, all that you do for us. I want you to know tonight, Father God, that I know that, Father God, that I need to continue to grow in your word and your truths. I just pray, Father God, that you help me to have a greater hunger. I pray that you help me to dig deeper and to study more. But, Father God, I pray for everyone listening in. I pray for this nation. I pray for our churches that, Father God, that nothing, that we will not let nothing replace the preaching of the gospel, that we will not let nothing replace your word, that we will not let let nothing replace your truth. But Father God, let our people come alive again and hunger and seek after the true word of God that we might be victorious over sin, but we also might be able to stand against the enemy in this day and this hour. Father God, I pray tonight if there's one listening in, that Father God that needs wisdom and knowledge, I pray that right now, Father God, that you begin to help them receive it. If there's one that's listening in, tonight, Father God, that's struggling in any way. I pray tonight that you will help them. If there's one listening in that don't know you as Lord and Savior, I pray tonight, Father God, that right now will be the hour and the moment that their lives are set free from sin forevermore. Father God, I just pray tonight that you will speak your holy word. Speak your word into our lives that we might receive it. Speak it that it may be so. Speak it that it may be according to your will, Father God. We ask it all in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. My friends, I thank you for being with me tonight. I thank you for praying with me. I thank you for praying for me and praying for others. I just ask you, please make sure that you click the share button. Share tonight's message. Invite other people to listen. Invite other people to share. My friend, I pray that wherever you go, whatever you do, that God goes with you, blesses you, and watches over you. I pray tonight, my friend, that God will bless you and keep you. But most of all, my friends, I'm praying that God will use each and every one of you to reach someone else for the gospel truth. Be blessed and have a wonderful night.